Here's our next problem. We're given that v sub x is positive 5 and v sub y is positive 4. And the question is, what is the overall vector? Determine the overall vector. Please pause the video and give that problem a shot. Don't spend too long on it because we haven't uh, done any examples of those together. So if you get stuck, restart the video and we'll go through that together. Well, the first thing we're going to have to do is draw a picture of our components here. So I'll start by showing v sub x, positive 5. I hope you started by writing down these positive directions. So the positive direction is to the right. And now I'm going to write v sub y. Notice that the second component starts where the first component left off. That's going to be a very important uh, uh, element of drawing the right picture here. This is what's called the head-to-tail method. The tail of the second component should begin where the head of the first component left off. Um, so make sure that you uh, drew v sub y uh, over here. And now we need to draw the overall vector. Now we need to draw the overall vector. Well, we could think that this is our initial point and this is our final point. When we started drawing the components, we started here and ended up here. Well, the overall vector should point from the initial point to the final point. The overall vector should point from the initial point to the final point. And it should form the hypotenuse of your triangle. Okay, um, so here's the correct overall vector. Of course, it would be wrong to put the arrowhead down here because then the overall vector would be pointing to the initial point. Well, no, we want the overall vector to point to the final point. Okay, so as usual, we formed a right triangle where the overall vector is the hypotenuse and the legs are parallel to the sides. Now, I'm going to make a note that here's the information we were given. The overall vector is what the question was asking us for. Now remember that this symbol here stands for the magnitude of the overall vector. You could put a dot on top of this, but it's not really necessary because remember there is no sign to overall vector. But notice that when I ask the question, I put this arrow over the V. What does the arrow indicate? Well, the arrow indicates that we're referring to the overall vector as a whole. Not just its magnitude, but we're referring to the overall vector as a whole. Well, what else is there to talk about for the overall vector? We know the overall vector doesn't have a sign. Well, of course, a vector is something with a magnitude and a direction. A vector is something with a magnitude and a direction. You haven't really specified the complete overall vector unless you've specified both its magnitude and its direction. Now, again, we can't indicate the direction of the overall vector with a sign. Overall vectors don't have signs because they're not parallel to either of the axes or anti-parallel. The only way you can have a clear sign is if you're parallel or anti-parallel to one of the axes. But this overall vector clearly is not parallel or anti-parallel to an axis, so there's no meaning to giving it a sign. So how do we specify the direction of the overall vector? There's a few different ways you could specify direction, but the way we're going to focus on is you could specify an angle that the overall vector is making. If we could specify an angle the overall vector is making, then we would really know what direction it's pointing in. So if we could just figure out this angle here, theta, then we really would know what the direction is of this overall vector. So when you're trying to specify the direction of an overall vector, what your instructor probably wants is an angle that the overall vector is forming. So in order to figure out everything about this vector, it's not going to be enough to find the magnitude. We're also going to have to find this angle, which represents the direction. So we're going to try to find theta there. Let me point uh, something else out here. Did you notice that when I drew this right triangle, first I drew the x component, and then I drew the y component. First I drew the x component, and then I drew the y component. What would have happened if I had drawn the y component first? Well, here's the y component. And then I would have drawn the x component. And then I would have drawn the overall vector. 
And then the natural angle to focus on would be this one. I'm going to call this angle alpha because there's no reason to think it's going to be the same as theta. It's not going to be the same angle as uh, theta, um, unless they're both 45. But normally these two angles wouldn't be different, uh, wouldn't be the same. Uh, you can see that this is an angle with the horizontal, and this is an angle with the vertical. So there's no real reason why they should be the same. So when you drew the x-axis, when you drew the x-component first, you end up with an angle with the x-axis. But when we draw the y-component first, we end up focusing on the angle with the y-axis. Well, which one is correct? Well, either is correct. You can draw it either way that you like. You can draw either of these pictures, and as long as you label the um, angle accurately, you should get full credit, uh, and you've correctly identified what the direction is. So if you drew this picture, then you should figure out what theta is. But if you drew this picture, then you should figure out this angle. Um, and um, you might call this angle theta, or you might call it alpha, or whatever. Um, so the point I want to make is, when you're drawing um, the overall vector, you could start by drawing either the x component first or the y component first. So that's going to end up either giving you an angle with the x-axis or an angle with the y-axis. Either way is perfectly fine, uh, as long as your picture is clearly labeled. We're going to stick here with this original picture. Um, but uh, this, spot, this would be fine too to figure out this angle. But there's no reason to think this angle will be the same as this angle over here. We can label as usual our hypotenuse. I'm going to put an asterisk here, not because we know theta, but because this is the angle we're focusing on here. And now we can see that the x component is adjacent and the y component is opposite. Now, we can either figure out the magnitude first or the angle first, whichever you like. I think people usually figure out the magnitude first. Let's do that. Well, now we're back in the type of problem where we're given two sides. Did you notice here that we were given two sides? No angles, except of course for the right angle. Just two sides. So we have to go back to the trigonometric techniques that we learned for dealing with situations where you're given two sides. Well, remember that when you're given two sides, you don't need a trig function to find the third side. You can just use the Pythagorean theorem. Let's write down that general formula and plug in. Now, the symbol we're going to use for the hypotenuse is V. One of the legs would be 5, and the other leg would be 4. There's no point inserting signs here because these are all lengths. Lengths are always positive, so there's no point indicating their sign. Don't forget that we're squaring the hypotenuse. Important not to forget that we're squaring the hypotenuse. You could use your calculator or just work out uh, on your own what 5 squared plus 4 squared is. It's 41. Now we have to get v by itself by getting rid of the square. Well, we have to use the do the opposite approach. What's the opposite of squaring? Square rooting. So we have to take the square root of both sides. And since we're dealing with lengths, we want to take the positive square root. So I've taken the positive square root of both sides of the equation. Well, what happens if you start with v, and then you square it, and then you take the square root? Well, you get back to v. That was the whole point of taking the square root to cancel out the square root. And we can use our calculator to find the square root of 41, which is 6.4. We don't have to indicate the sign because lengths are always positive. Well, now we've figured out the magnitude of the overall vector. The magnitude of the overall vector is 6.4. This is algebra that we've done many times now in these videos. Uh, you might have noticed that earlier in the videos, I didn't actually write down this step. I didn't actually write down when we were taking the square root of v squared. I said we were doing it, but I didn't write it down. And now I'm feeling kind of guilty about that. It's better to write more steps down. If your algebra skills are weak, it's better to write down all the steps. So even though I didn't write down the step in the earlier portions of the video, I was talking about it. Maybe now I'll, I'll get into the habit sometimes of writing down the step. Uh, the golden rule of algebra is that if we're going to take the square root of one side, we have to take the square root of both sides. So here I'm explicitly showing we're taking the square root of the left-hand side. And we can see that if you square something and take its square root, you just get back the original variable. That's the whole basis of the do the opposite trick. 